Today, we're gonna see what's cracking with NZXT's new AIO. The Lian Li 011 Dynamic Evo builds upon its legendary design by bringing even more modularity and customization to meet your build needs. The dual chamber design offers extremely clean cable management, while support for up to three 360 millimeter radiators and 10 fans offer superior cooling for the latest power hungry components. To see the full list of features and capabilities of the 011 Dynamic Evo from Lian Li, follow the link in the description below. All right, so we're gonna unbox a couple of AIOs here from NZXT. This uh, new line of AIO for them just dropped. And it's kind of funny because for a while there, things were kind of getting so efficient with CPUs prior to the real CPU battles that AIOs and custom loops and stuff were really starting to like not be all that necessary. But now that we're seeing CPUs that can draw well over 300 watts, Water is friendly again because of the fact that it has amazing dis um, properties when it comes to absorbing heat and being able to dissipate. You know, the ca thermal capacity of water is much greater than that of air. So the new coolers here from NZXT, they still retain the old name, Kraken. However, um, they've kind of simplified it a little bit. Now we have the Elite and we just have the Kraken. Or before they had like so many, like the X73, X72, X63, X62, and all these different names and stuff, which kind of made things a little bit um, confusing. But as you can see here, if you look at the basic model, as well as the elite model, they both have LCD screens on them now, which is kind of nice because the pump, it's a nice surface area on top to utilize some sort of, have some sort of a tool there. And it's nice to have a screen now that you can customize to show you various temperatures or voltages or, you know, customizable features that you can use NZXT cam to not only control the pump and the lighting and you know the fan controls, but also to be able to control what shows on that screen. Now, a couple of the major differences here is the Kraken 240, and this is available in the 360 as well. So let's just pretend for all intents and purposes that these, these are the same size. We're talking about the pump differences and the screens and whatnot. The 240 here, the non-elite, is a 1.54 inch LCD display. It's a 240 by 240 P resolution. So 240 by 240 at 1.5 inches is pretty, it's gonna look pretty dense, like in terms of its pixel density. It's not gonna look all pixelated and terrible. But the Elite, on the other hand, has a much brighter backlight, a bit much bigger screen too, at 2.36 uh, inch wide angle viewable screen, and it's a 640 by 640. So it's significantly sharper resolution than what you'll find on the standard, um, which is giving it obviously uh, a, a lot more viewable area there. So let's go ahead and start by unboxing the standard 240, because as you can imagine, you know, as you start adding these feature sets and stuff to the AIOs, they can start to go up in price quite a bit. And what's gonna affect the price of an AIO? It's gonna be any features that are on the pump, as you saw with the LCD screen. Um, are the fans RGB? Are the fans like daisy chainable, smart controlled, et cetera, et cetera. So all these things can definitely increase uh, cost of an AIO. But it's nice to see their entry level or their main, I should say their mainstream lineup here also including the LCD display. Now one thing also I wanna point out is this is the seventh gen Asatec pump. So these are based off of an Asatec design. However, if you're not familiar with how it works with Asatec, basically the cold, the cold plate and the pump itself is what is the Asatec design. Essentially everything else that goes on top of that pump, when it, the screens and the control modules and all that, that is all up to the manufacturer brand. So basically they take their design and put it on top of an Asatec um, design already. So if we look at what comes with our pump and such here, so we have a bag here that has all of our mounting brackets and this should be essentially the same for both kits. Oh, this is nice to see. Okay, so we get for AMD, we get an actual retention bracket, and this makes me happy because for the longest time, and you can see right here, it shows you a little warning, like which one to use for AM4 or AM5. A little bit different Z, height, Z axis height, I believe. This goes onto the pump, and then you get tension on all four corners of the bracket, rather than it retaining that clip, the clip that's on either side of the socket, which is on the motherboard by default. That clip allows it to sort of rock a little bit and it doesn't give you as much tension as having all four corners like this. Now this is kind of a thin bracket. It's fairly thin, but I think it would get the job done. Anyway, this is the Intel retention backplate. So this is what goes through the Intel motherboard and then you got your standoff screws that will go on here and then your pump will mount to that as they're sticking through the backside of the motherboard. Um, it is plastic. So it's not gonna cause any shorts. It is adjustable based on the different LGA socket types for Intel. So there's that. And then you got your different mounting hardware for, like this is your Intel mounting hardware. 
This is your AMD mounting hardware. This is your 1700. The 1700 does have a little bit different mounting height, so that's why these are gonna be a little bit longer. These are your radiator mounting screws, so you can mount your fans to your radiators and mount your radiator to your chassis or use through so that it goes through the chassis into the fan, into the rad. So there's all your hardware there. Let's take a look at the harness. This is usually the ugliest part of any AIO. The wires that come off of it sometimes are not very well thought out, which means all kinds of crud sticking out of your pump. So this is a single harness. No longer is it separated where one is a USB harness and then another one is a fan header harness and then another one goes to the fans for your radiator. We have one plug that has three different things coming out of it as you can see. So this is our RPM signal wire for the CPU so that this will go into your CPU header on your motherboard so it sees a signal. This is gonna be our communication wire, which I'm assuming is USB 2.0. Yes, this is a USB 2.0 header. So you will need one of these on your motherboard or a hub or an adapter to turn this into a standard USB-A to plug into the back of your motherboard if you don't have a free USB 2.0. And then here, we've got our SATA power, which is gonna power our pump, as well as our fan splitter. So we have a three-way PWM fan splitter. This is for the three fans, up to three fans that you will find on the AIO. So this one will only use two of them, obviously. But it's nice to see one plug coming out of the side of the pump where it used to be several plugs on the older generation. So there's that. The fans, they're gonna be fairly basic. Nothing special, no RGB, no variable speed control switch on them. In fact, they're fairly lightweight. Um, Kind of a hybrid design between airflow and static pressure. Obviously it has to pull static pressure through a radiator. So, you know, that's gonna be important. It is a fluid dynamic bearing and it's gonna pull 0.23 amps at 12 volts. So shouldn't be too loud. They're gonna be fairly generic in performance. The mounting area right here though, these circles, they are rubber, a very soft rubber. So this will help cut down on vibrations transferred to your case, which could transfer to your desk, which could transfer to your brain, and then you won't be happy. So as you can see, we get two of those, and then we've got standard PWM connectors on there, which will just connect to the splitter on the main harness, as you can see right there. Now the radiator is also gonna be pretty much an Asetek type of design, which means it is going to more than likely be an aluminum radiator. Now this is the kind of stuff that freaks a lot of people out when we talk about aluminum radiators in cooling systems. You have to remember, they have glycols, let's see that again. They have coolants that are designed specifically for the metallurgy that exists in this loop. So the fluid that is in here is designed to be able to deal with galvanic corrosion and anything that may exist inside of these radiators. They have been tested for years and years. And although there have been instances in the past with some brands where corrosion can exist, um, it hasn't really happened to any of the AIOs that we have on hand so far. Here is your pump. As you can see, it has pre-applied thermal paste on there. So you'll want to keep the cover on here until you're ready to mount it. That way you don't mess that up because it does not come with a tube of thermal paste. So I would also highly recommend having a tube of thermal paste on hand just in case you scratch it or mess it up and you need to reapply. But anyway, when it comes to switching the bracket, um, the Intel bracket is pre-installed. We can just push down and turn and it comes off just like that. And then we can install our AMD bracket just like that. So just that fast we convert it over to AMD, which is nice. Uh, when it comes to the tubing, as you can see here, it is uh, paracord sleeved. This is a soft, uh, like a thread on here, which is, so it's not like a PET sort of plastic sleeving. It is a paracord, shiny paracord, as you can see. Um, but what's nice is you do have swivels uh, where they mount to the pump right there. It's actually nice to see the screen exists on their, their more mainstream because now that there's so many different AIO companies out there, you kind of got to stand out in the crowd to make people want to buy your products. So let me repackage all this and get it back in the box and we'll take a look at the Elite and see what you're getting for the extra cost. 
Be Quiet is proud to announce their all-new white, light wings, high-performance ARGB fans, available in 120 and 140 millimeter sizes. All fans are PWM and available in either a 7-blade or a 9-blade high-performance model. Lightwings fans feature ARGB lighting on both the front and the back, allowing for a customized appearance no matter which way the fan is facing. Available in either a single fan or a triple pack with a fan hub included, the new white Lightwings fans from Be Quiet are an obvious choice for PC enthusiasts who demand performance and silent operation. To see the full list of specs and availability, follow the link in the description below. Let's go ahead and open up. This is in the white variant. I don't recall there being a white Kraken. I don't think if there was, I've never had one. Anyway, there we go. Similar manual. This goes through all of your, I don't like these unfoldable manual types. This is just, I get it, but this is a, whatever. I'd rather have a booklet. Here are the fans. These are RGB fans. They look very similar to the black ones that we just saw. However, as you can see, they have two cables coming off of them. One is a PWM four pin, and then one is a four pin ARGB, which is specific to their controller. So this is not one that could like attach to a motherboard and work just fine. This is uh, intended for their controller. Anyway, the RGB on this is hub illuminated. So what that means is the ring of lights is in the hub right here, shining outward. So it'll be brightest here in the center. And then this is kind of a translucent, clear white plastic. So some of it will make its way to the end of the blades. Um, but rather than having any illuminated cage at all on the fan, it was all coming from the hub itself. So I want to point that out. This guy, as you can see right here, has three RGB channels, RGB1, RGB2, RGB3. And this is gonna be specific for uh, these fans right here. So if we unplug this, you can see it has its own USB 2.0 header. And we know that the pump is probably gonna have one as well, which means that you would need two free USB 2.0 headers to use this one. So it's got SATA power, which will be powering the RGB, as well as three channels right there, which is what these guys would plug into. But again, does use a 2.0 header. So make sure you have plenty on your motherboard or you need to buy a hub. NZXC does sell a, a USB hub as well, an internal hub. And what that means is it goes from the USB 2.0 plug like this, the square plug, which then will can, uh, terminate to, I think it's four USB 2.0 hubs. That way, if you don't have enough for your, all your devices, you can at least split the signal that way. Looks like pretty much all the exact same mounting hardware that we saw on the standard. Here is our harness. This one is actually different. And you know what? I guess we can backpedal on what I said about needing a splitter because they give you one. So this is a USB 2.0 splitter. It basically does exactly as I just said. This part will go into your motherboard USB 2 header. And then this splits the signal out to two more of them. So you can plug one into your pump and one into your ARGB controller. And now you're only using one for two devices. It's really nice to see this included because of the fact they know their AIO here uses two of them. And a lot of motherboards these days are not putting more than two on there because everything's moved over to like USB 3.1, 3.1A or, or 3.1 Gen 2 or USB-C. So a lot of stuff has changed now to where the USB 2 header is starting to become a relic. Let's now take a look at the pump. This one's gonna be a little bit different on top. When it comes to the cooling plate aspect though, it is the exact same seventh gen Asa Tech design that's on the standard. So in terms of it being quote unquote cooler, that will have nothing to do with the pump. That is just because this has a larger radiator. If this was a 360 AIO instead of a 240, cooling wise, it would be exactly the same. What you're getting in the Elite is extra functionality like the larger screen. Um, as you can see, it is a bigger pump housing. This is metal. Is it metal? It feels cold like it's metal. Definitely it's heavier because everything on top is, is bigger. Again, it has to accommodate the bigger screen with the 640 by 640. Um, if we take a look at the harness on there, I'm so happy that they have put this on the top like that. So if you have the tubes coming out the bottom, which a lot of people have to do these days because a lot of times the RAM channels are too close to the side of the pump. With this being a fatter pump, um, the tubes can inter interfere and hit with the RAM. Now you can rotate the display in cam so that if you have to turn it 90 degrees in some direction, you can rotate it to be the right way inside of cam. But as you can see, the cables are gonna come out the opposite end. So if you can manage to have the tubes on the bottom and then going up to your radiator up top, 
or even like this, if it's in the front, then the wires will be pointing up towards the top of the case where you can have them zip tied up nice and tidy, even hide the extra wires behind the flat ribbon cable part, as you can see there. If we just sort of hide that, then it will go up through the pass-through grommet above the motherboard, and then you'll just have what looks like one harness coming out of there instead of three, uh, making it nice and tidy. And then the radiator, as you can see, is powder coated a gloss white. It kind of looks like a matte white in the photos, but this is a gloss white powder coating. Actually, no, it is a matte. I take that back, it is matte, okay, cool. So the fins are powder coated, the side and end tanks are powder coated, and it is a matte white. So this is also a standard 30 mil thick radiator, um, which means it's gonna give you pretty decent amount of dissipation when it comes to being able to keep your high-end CPUs nice and cool. So anyway, when it comes to like the cam software, that's something that's been sort of a point of contention for a long time. <laughs> I think you have to understand that CAM started with NZXT years and years and years ago as sort of a, a pet project of one of their employees inside the organization that then later on got full on support and became a much more robust and a much lighter weight piece of software to run. Uh, it's no surprise that back in the day, it was a very heavy piece of software. And what do you mean by that is just with, with any software that is like constantly pulling sensors in your system, if it doesn't do so efficiently, it can definitely start to make your system feel sluggish and slow because it's all of those, um, those pollings, I don't know what else to call them, pollings. The polling of all the sensors can create latency in your system. It has certainly gotten better over time. It's one of those, if you haven't tried it, and CAM software is actually free. Um, you don't even need NZXT software to use it. But if you wanna monitor your computer, it is something that you can look at. You do have to register, so that kind of throws a lot of people off. But uh, it's come a long way especially when it comes to being a piece of software that they use to get their, they, you have to have some functionality, right? All right, so while I repackage this, we're gonna do one thing here real quick. I think what we're gonna do is we are going to plug each of these up into my test bench. I'm not gonna attach them to the CPU and, and run a test with them. They're gonna perform just like any other Asa Tech branded or, or repackaged AIO, uh, especially the seventh gen ones. They're gonna perform identical because they are ASA tech when it comes to the cooling design. What I wanna look at is the software and I wanna see what the resolution looks like on each of these screens side by side. So let me get them set up on the test benches and we'll be right back. All right, so the light's kinda of dim because I want you guys to be able to see the screen. But anyway, this is uh, NZXT cam right here. So as you can see, it shows you a lot of what's happening here. CPU load, clock speed, temperatures, um, GPU temperature even, so network speeds. You can keep track of a lot of stuff. That's just a nice to have. It's almost like a sensor panel built into the app. Anyway, system specs, everything you need to know about your system there. Lighting, if we were, and I can turn up the brightness of the LCD screen. I can turn it up and down. It's set to about the middle by default. I'm gonna go bright for us. Um, you can change a lot of stuff here. So single infographic, we can put an image on there if we wanted. Um, dual infographic where it shows two things. So you can see we got CPU and GPU showing right there. You can change the colors of them too. Like, what the range looks like. We can change the background color. You can really customize this to, to be whatever you want. Here's the rotate display thing that I was talking about. Basically, you can rotate it now for every single possible mounting location of the bracket. So the bracket, there's a lot of teeth that it can fit within. So it's not just 90 degree turns. It's like these 15 degree turns or 12 degree turns or whatever these are right here. So you can make it match wherever the tubes are. And you notice how it's saying use the tubes as an indication of where it's uh, set. So this is out of the box with tubes in the bottom, like I said, cable on the top. But if our tubes were on the side, like on the left side, which would be super odd, then if you hit save, it'll rotate the display, see? So that if they were on the left, now it's all looking correct. In the past, you couldn't rotate this more than 90. Like it was not, it, it wasn't great, but now you can rotate it around however you want. Um, let's see here, we got dual infographic plus a GIF. You can put GIFs on here, which is kind of neat. So here, let's just do that one. Kaleidoscopy effect, look at that. You can update your own. I mean, I don't know if we have a JS2 Sense one on here, do we? On Gliffy? <gasps> we do! The irony that it's an iFixit one, but hey, check it out. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of neat, right? <laughs> Not that I think anyone would, would or should do this, but maybe you should, I don't know. The resolution is really, really good, and so is the color. 
Um, 640 by 640, that's a lot in this size of a screen right here. Yeah, so pretty cool stuff here. Carousel. This is just the one that has it going around. As the, So as the temperature goes up, that dot will move and the color of that ring will change too to indicate like, hey, that's getting kind of hot. Now right now it's showing just the liquid temp, but we can change what it's actually looking at. Oh, that clock face, that's kind of neat. So you can have it just be a clock or even digital clock. So a lot of really cool stuff. Like they've come a long way since they've done this. Um, audio visual, oh cool. So if we play our sounds here, Eh. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this one now and I'm gonna plug in the smaller screen one so that you can see how the resolution itself is still pretty good. And, and fun fact, it will not turn on if it doesn't see a signal coming from the header. So whatever header you have this plugged into as well, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's full. It's set to full speed. Otherwise, if it's a low voltage header that's like trying to ramp down a fan, it may not give enough signal to turn on the pump. So just make sure that you have this going. But as you can see, this one's more of a mirrored finish where this is a matte finish. And then this is obviously a lot smaller screen and a lot smaller or a lot less resolution dense. So the, the pixel density is not as high. One thing I wanna point out too, you guys may not be able to see it on camera is the screen is only as big as when the puck opens up entirely. So that's actually the edges of the screen. It's just a square in the center of the circle that is the screen. Whereas in the Elite, the entire thing is the screen. So that's how this is bigger than 1.54 inches or whatever it is, but it's not entirely a screen. So it's just a square in the very center. I don't think it's gonna show up on camera, uh, but it's pretty obvious with your eyes that the screen is just a square in the middle. So you can see by looking at the liquid temp there in that circle, that's the size of the screen. So it's much smaller but you know, you're getting something for it. There's web integration too, which is available on the Elite. And this is where you can have it showing like your Spotify songs that are playing, a Google photo slideshow, a custom, where you can put a URL in there and make it web integrations if you want. Um, not gonna demonstrate that today, but it's just kind of neat that you have that available to you. So the double graphic on this one, as you can see, I kind of like this one better than the Elite, to be honest with this bar, uh, because I have to make efficient space of that tinier screen but it's just nice to be able to look at your AIO pump at a glance and say, hey, you know, this is what my temps are, which is kind of nice to see. All right, so all in all, the next generation Kraken, I don't know what else to call it. Um, they're just recalling it Kraken. I'm gonna call it next gen. It's come a long way from the earlier versions. I feel like the harness improvement you know, with the one plug is definitely nicer. The screen rotation happening on like, what, 15 degree increments is nice versus their like 180, which they initially had, and then like 90 degree ones that they had. Uh, the screen resolutions are good on both. The standard Kraken having the tiny screen, although it's really small, it's still nice to have versus just an infinity ring of light or whatever. So you have some information visible to you right at your pump. Um, other than that, seventh gen Asetek cooling plate, it's gonna cool pretty much any modern CPU just fine. Overclockability will probably inc increase a little bit over like a standard air cooler, um, but again, Modern CPUs are even asking a lot of water-cooled systems these days. So as water cooling kind of becomes more mainstream again, because as people build high-end systems, they're kind of needing to to get not just the maximum performance out of their system, but maintain the maximum performance boost clocks as long as possible, a lot of people are looking at water again. So a 360 AIO would definitely be the way to go. Um, if you don't have the room, a 240 AIO is gonna be pretty much on par with a high-end air cooler. Um, but it's gonna take up a lot less space and it's a lot less uh, intrusive when it comes to like covering up RAM and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching today's video. Huge thanks to NZXT for sending us their Kraken 240 and their Elite 360 to take a look at. You guys can find a link down in the description below. These did just launch, so it might take some time to see them in stores, um, but you can definitely find them at places like Micro Center, probably even Best Buy, Amazon, uh, Memory Express, all the main places you would typically find. Computer parts are guaranteed to have these on the shelf once they you know, get fully in stock. So thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.